Hey everybody, it's Corey from CoreyBakerFilmmaker.com. Thank you so much for watching. I just saw Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, are written by Christina Hodson and directed by Kathy Ann. Caught this movie at the AMC Norwalk 20. Um, just a quick thing, last time I saw a movie out, I went to go see Little Women because it was a 7 o'clock in Burbank and everyone was getting off work and we were trying to rush there. We missed the first, like, little bit of the movie. So we decided that it was worth it to do an 8 o'clock. But to do that, we had to do Norwalk, which is further away, different kind of traffic problems and stuff like that. Uh, if anything, the point is, I think there should be more 8 o'clock screenings of movies at, like, major multiplexes. It, it would It would really improve things significantly. And uh, I would suggest that that be factored in more often. So in Birds of Prey, we're following Harley Quinn after her breakup with the Joker, and she's trying to sort of like put her own mark out there and be her own woman. Uh, and hijinks ensue, but it's told in a uh, a narrative that is not, it's not a reliable narrator, and it's not a reliable narrative because it just jumps back and forth wherever they feel like they need to. But it's done in a very... Uh, humorous way and it's a lot of fun and I think way more entertaining than if the story was just told sort of like in chronological order piece by piece. So this movie was fun. I don't know if I would say that it was good. I feel like that this is a perfect example for the Fast and the Furious leaderboard which we will absolutely 100% get on this movie because I mean like the actual you know, like, if you're looking at this compared to Parasite, it's not the same thing. It's just not, it's, the, the, it, it's not meant to be the same thing. But if you're going saying, I like Margot Robbie, and I like DC Comics, and I want to have some fun, this is fun. This is, it's most certainly fun. So, it's hard to, I mean, like, any note that I make here about, like, how good or bad this movie actually is is kind of irrelevant to the fact that it's not meant to be, like, a award-winning movie. It's just not, that's not what it is. This is, this is DC's Deadpool in a way. And, you know, it can be a lot of fun while not being, you know, seen as, like, art. But it doesn't really matter because, you know, the whole point of going to movies is fun. So, let's... Think about it not so much as uh, me like needlessly reviewing things that they got wrong, but sort of ideas of uh, what they could have done differently to sort of best improve what they had going in. First things first, Margot Robbie just has Harley Quinn down. Like it, it's she doesn't need to be doing anything different. They don't need to be doing anything different as far as DC goes. Like Margot Robbie is done. Like she she figured it out. It's good. Uh, that part is just, we can chart that off as a win. Uh, and for a movie like this, that's just, you know, part of the huge deal. If you if you figure out how to cast the lead and they knock it out of the park, then it's, a lot of your problems are already solved. Um, part of my thing here with, like, Mary, Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Journey Smollett Bell is just that as uh, the Huntress and Black Canary is that I just didn't feel like uh, they were put in the position to succeed as much as Harley Quinn was. And I know that, you know, Harley Quinn's the reason why we all bought tickets to this thing. But, you know, I was excited when I saw Mary Elizabeth Winstead on the on the cast list. I, I thought that it was I really like her as an actor in particular, and I thought that she would be able to bring something kind of interesting to this whole process, but I just felt like it was her role in this was a little lacking. And while I didn't feel the same way about Black Canary, I also didn't feel like they really, like, they gave her time, but they didn't give her opportunities to really, like, maximize uh, what could have been a, a really interesting uh, role that helped elevate this movie. I think part of the thing with these superhero movies is that, you know, you sort of have to have a high hit rate on all the people who are, like, right near the top. The more times I find myself saying, like, oh my god, we have, 
you know, some amazing actor or actress who just knocked it out of the park from, like, the fifth spot on the call sheet, like, that that usually means that the comic book movie is going to end up being really good. There's really good people, like, all the way down the call sheet on this one, but they don't seem to maximize the use of those particular people. Ewan McGregor, like, he's fun, he's entertaining, he's good to... Like you know, he's uh, the he he draws your eye on the on the screen, for whatever reason. Just didn't it didn't seem to be put in his in his zone right there. Uh, same could be said with like Ali Long. Like you have her in the movie, she's not really like funny, which is like sort of her thing. Um, I really enjoy Chris Messina in this, but it also seems like he was sort of doing like the, like he, he didn't really, he made a lot of little, but didn't really get an opportunity to really turn this whole thing around. And I mean like the, you know, the, the kid actress, uh, Ella J. Basco as Cassandra Kane was good, but didn't seem like she ever got an opportunity to like really shine on herself as, as much as or to be a comic foil to Harley Quinn. And I mean, I get it. I know who I know who is making people go see this movie. But having there's a way that you could have had Harley Quinn just as locked off as you did in this movie, and have more compelling performances by people a little bit further down the call sheet, and it would have made Harley Quinn even better. And that's sort of the point. Like it, it's not that it's not fun, and that you're not going to walk out of this going like, oh, I'm happy I did this. It's just that you're there, there, there was so much opportunity for more. And that's, I think the thing that sort of kills me on this. I will say that I like that they seem to have figured out the tone on this movie pretty well. Uh, in DC movies of the past, the unevenness of the tone has really been something that has not made them as enjoyable to watch as they should be. You know, there there was a thing about, like, you know, like, watching Batman v Superman and being so, like, just, it, it being so needlessly dark and just have, being so dry and feeling like, you know, like, something you had to do as opposed to something you wanted to do. Like, it just, it, it doesn't, it, they figured it out since then. That's great. They can make a movie like... Uh, Birds of Prey, and it could be a lot of fun. They can make a movie like Joker. It can be really dark. They can both fit perfectly within the lane that they're supposed to be. Uh, that's an, a promising step in the right direction for DC and the movie side of things. I do worry that the casting... Not so much that... You know, again, the, all these people are great, and I really like them. It just sort of felt like, for whatever reason, it was square pegs and round holes. Like, it just didn't something didn't quite work out the way that it was supposed to. And I don't know if it's, you know, there weren't opportunities given to the great people to really shine, or if it was just that these weren't the right people to be in these particular spots. I mean, it's not, you can't just pick names out of a hat. There has to be some sort of like thought process that goes into why somebody will have an opportunity to succeed in a role. And if you can look at it from a thousand feet up and, notice these things before you actually film the movie, the better off you're going to be. If I don't get a leaderboard here in less than five seconds, there's going to be some real mayhem. Oh, wait, there it is. It's leaderboard time, everybody. Uh, Saw this movie at the AMC Norwalk 20, the second time I've seen a movie at that theater. Uh, Both have been in Dolby. Uh, Both have been at a more convenient 8 o'clock time slot. These are all things I enjoy and would like to have at more theaters closer to me. If uh, the people at AMC are thinking about ways to improve the AMC Burbank 16 or something like that, uh, 8 o'clock showings. Um, Moving on to the movie leaderboard. I mean, again, this one, this number is is almost irrelevant. It's like I have to rate it because this is what I do on on this review. Uh, The one that's more important is the uh, Fast and the Furious leaderboard, which is coming up in just a minute. But for the sake of throwing out a arbitrary number to decree how much I thought this movie was worth it, I will give it a 7.2. But 
not it. The one you care about is right now the Fast and the Furious one. So here we are uh, amongst the the fun but not quite uh, beloved movies of the Fast and the Furious leaderboard. This one is interesting because I I liked it and I liked how it how it went, but it didn't seem to like nail it. Did, just didn't hit it flush. Like it it it, it was. It was fun to watch, but it wasn't as amazing as I feel like it could have been. That being said, it's a lot of fun. It's also not the same old, same old. It's told a little bit differently. And therefore, you get the opportunity to really have some fun that you don't normally get to have. So, all that being said, on the Fast and the Furious leaderboard, I would give this movie... A uh, seven seven, uh, good time. Had fun. Uh, would do again. Uh, would hope that it was maybe now that we've introduced all these characters, if we did a Birds of Prey two or something like that, maybe they can just figure out a way to like work it in their wheelhouse a little better. That's really all I ask. Anyway, that's it for me. If you want more, you can go to my website, CoreyBakerFilmmaker.com, Facebook.com forward slash CoreyBakerFilm, or at LegendsTV5 on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, I will have a review for Ford vs. Ferrari coming up here shortly for you to enjoy. It, I was able to see all the Best Picture nominees before the Oscars. It was a incredible feat done by me, but unfortunately the review did not get done before the Oscars, so you will get it on Monday. Um... But yeah, that's about it. So if uh, you have any suggestions for movies to see, please leave them in the comments below or hit me up on social media. And until next time, I just got to go talk to Mr. J. I got to work it out. It's just not, I can't do this single thing. I just, I can't.